Hello and welcome to this week's review. And this week I'm looking at a turntable upgrade kit from the UK outfit, the Funk firm. Called the Kit 10, it looks to upgrade the relatively recently released Technics SL 1500C turntable. And the kit itself arrives at a discounted 600 and 45 pounds. You can, if you wish, buy the individual components of the Kit 10 from the Funk Firm website. And you can add the bits when you can afford it, when the cash is available, when the budget will allow. So you don't have to buy the Kit 10 all in one go, but there's a bit of a discount included with the Kit 10. So there's a bit of a incentive to buy this kit. But as I say, if cash is tight then you can buy the included bits one at a time and we'll go into what this kit actually consists of in a moment but before we look at the kit in any real detail let's see what this turntable is that we're looking to upgrade let's lay the groundwork in fact let's take a closer look And welcome to the Closer Look section for the Technics SL1500C upgrade kit from the Funk firm. But in front of you here, you're looking at a stock out of the box 1500C. This was released this year to a general chorus of approval. It's an easy to set up direct drive design using a core less motor and features quality speed management gubbins within. The chassis is pretty solid and damped and there's a curvaceous tone arm with a removable SME type head shell that uses the company's traditional manufacturing techniques. What impressed me most about the tone arm was the VTA adjustment option and how easy it is to use for the price. You just flip the lock switch on the arm itself to the unlock position and then you simply pull the tone arm up or you push it down to affect and change the VTA. Ideal if you're fitting new or different size cartridges or alternatively different platter mats of varying thicknesses. The SL1500C arrives with the highly rated Autofon 2M red cartridge in the box to get you up and running. There are built-in features on this turntable relating to ease of use with its ready to use auto lift option. That is once engaged the tone arm will lift up at the end of the record's final track and well hang in the air waiting for you to return the tone arm back to its protective cradle. Doing so means the SL1500C is not a true semi-automatic. A true semi-automatic would automatically return the tone arm to that very cradle. You can disable the auto lift option if you wish. There's also a half decent phono amplifier included in the actual turntable. You can switch this off if you're using an external model, but because you're given two sets of outputs here, you can be plugged into both at the same time and toggle between the two if you so wish with an appropriate switch at the rear of the turntable chassis. There's an IEC power socket which is canted to the right of the rear of the chassis which does make connection a little awkward but it also helps if you want to upgrade the bog standard mains cable. If you flip over the aluminium platter you'll see that it's well it's nicely damped. Actually I was quite impressed at the attention to detail for the damping for this part. In sound terms, out of the box, the SL1500C is very nice indeed. It's not perfect and I could nitpick, but really, for the price and the facilities it provides, the SL1500C does a great job. And I recommend a demo if you're in the market for a sub 
1K turntable. More specifically, last time I looked, the turntable itself out of the box was priced at £899. As I say though, it's not perfect, and the UK outfit, the Funk Firm, appears to be of the same mind, which is why it's produced a kit to upgrade its sonic capabilities. As I've found out myself, most turntables out there have hidden sonic capacity. That is, if you carefully tweak and tone up a default out-of-the-box turntable, any turntable, then nine times out of ten the sound will improve, sometimes dramatically. Now, when I heard that ex-Mr Pink Triangle, Arthur Kubasarian's The Funk Firm, were on the case of the SL1500C, well, I was intrigued indeed. The kit itself holds the rather prosaic name of Kit 10. Well, prosaic for the funk firm at any rate. I sort of expected something like, I don't know, the Armageddon 1 or some such, which would have been more par for the course for the funk firm, I reckon. In short, the Kit 10 includes a full set of Boeing feet to replace the default Technics examples. The Boeings are the heavy duty variants and are priced around £175 or so on their own. You also get an Acromat Platomat to replace the useless rubber example, and this Acromat, again, somewhere around £75 to £80 on its own. The final part of the kit is attached to the tone arm and arrives in two bits. Firstly is a replacement head shell of nylon construction called the Cobra, and that would set you back around £110-£115 on its own. Under that is a Houdini, which is priced around £300, including tax. So let's take a quick look at each of these components in turn. Let's start with the feet, the Boing feet, which features a screw thread to connect to the underside of the 1500 C's plinth. These are sprung, rather bouncy feet with extra damping material included to decouple the turntable from the vibration happening all around it. The particular variants used here are the more expensive types because they have to cope with the extra weight from the Technics plinth. Now I'm used to using the Boeing feet on my reference Funk Firm LSD turntable and I know how good these are and how much vibration and hence noise they reduce during use. So thumbs up there. Next is the Acromat, which is one of the best value Plasomats currently for sale on the market and sits in my all-time top five Plasomats. The mat itself is acrylic based and features thousands of micro bubbles within its structure to draw in energy from the turntable and your vinyl record. That energy is then turned to heat, which dissipates into the air and reduces the noise floor still further. It also damps metal and glass platters. So, on a brief tangent here, check out this mat if you run a Riga or NAD or even certain project turntables. Just make sure your tone arm is level in use because this mat is relatively thick at either 3mm or 5mm. Now the 1500C is fortunate in that it has that easy to use VTA adjustment option, so setting up the tone arm for this platter mat was a doddle. As for the head shell, the Cobra, well its main claim to fame is that it's been produced to connect to a turntable with limited VTA. Now even though the 1500C can be tweaked on those terms, it does need extra clearance because of this kit, and because this kit includes the Houdini. Now the Houdini is the most expensive part of this entire kit. In fact, it's around half the price of the kit in its entirety. The Houdini sits right underneath the head shell, the Cobra in this case, and you can see the circular disc-like chassis just here. The Houdini decouples the cartridge from the head shell, providing a sort of suspension system for your cartridge that remains stable during play and also offers a so-called torsion tether 
to prevent vibration running down the tone arm to your cartridge and back again. It's a six millimeter mini beast of an accessory. So that extra VTA clearance provided by the rather curvy head shell comes in nicely here. Now, before we get to the sound quality tests, I'd just like to talk about how I'm going to test this Funk Firm Kit 10. So that's the kit. How does it sound? Well, before we get to that point, I wanted to change the cartridge. Why is that? Well, the Autophon 2M Red is highly rated. It's very nice indeed. And as I say, it comes with the Technics 1500C in the box. But look, if I'm looking to increase the sound quality of this turntable with this Funk Firm Kit 10, then I suspect that the cartridge, well, that could be a bit of a bottleneck. It may not allow the Kit 10 to reach its full capacity in sonic terms. And that might skew the eventual sound quality results in this test. So I didn't want that to happen or the risk of that to happen. So I decided to change and upgrade the cartridge. So I moved up the ladder by a rung or three by changing this cartridge to an Audio Technica VM540ML, which you can find priced around £230. The stock Autophon cartridge in this particular turntable box is a moving magnet design, so I wanted to retain the moving magnet flavour and personality with the 540. So the intention of upgrading the cartridge was just to provide extra capacity, just to give the 1500 room to breathe. Now I'll be comparing a fully kitted out 1500 with a stock out of the box model. But as you might expect, I'll be using the 540 cartridge on both test ten tables, just to ensure a level playing field. How was I going to review the kit itself. Essentially, the kit 10 arrives in three main parts. You've got the Cobra connected already to the Houdini, so that's one part. You've got the feet and you've got the mat. My idea was to isolate each of these three groups individually and to test each one individually. I wanted to see what parts of the sound envelope each bit of the kit 10 actually addressed. Hence the reason for isolating each individual bit. So for example, I would test the stock out of the box Technics 10 table with an upgraded version of the 1500C only with the feet installed and nothing else. I would see what the differences are in sound terms. Then I would test the out of the box model with another 1500C but only using the platter mat and nothing else. And then finally testing the Cobra stroke Houdini combo again on their own. So in this way, I could see what each part of the kit is doing to the sound. And once I'm happy with all of that, the idea is then to lump all three of those major parts together and review the kit as a whole. So in effect, we've got four tests here, the three main parts of the kit, and the kit all together. So let's do that, shall we? Let's go to the sound quality tests. To the sound quality tests and well as many of us do when we're faced with turntable tribulation i turned to ella fitzgerald with the lp called brighton the corner i chose the track i shall not be moved which is a song that has many footballing connotations these days 
as it does religious. The track itself features percussion, a slightly shy piano on the left channel, and a backing harmony choir, upright bass, and cymbal taps. It's a simple song, simply sung, but there's plenty of frequency action for the upgrade to tackle here. So to begin the tests, I went straight for the main enchilada and I plugged in the Houdini with the Cobra head shell into one 1500C turntable and I compared that with a stock out of the box 1500C. offered by the addition of the Houdini loaded head shell was interesting. It didn't hit you over the head with obvious. A half-hearted casual listen would probably result in a less than impressive response. But if you listen to what has gone before and then you listen to what you've got now, the differences are there and there's plenty of them. The differences here reside in the detail and the information on offer. So what I mean by that is adding the Cobra head shell with the Houdini, the effects were not sort of in your face. It wasn't like listening to a surround sound system with big subwoofer explosions that really sort of impress. It wasn't like that. What the Houdini does is it invites you to go to it. It doesn't come to you and that's a good sign. That's what high-end hi-fi sounds like. So the more you listen, the more you hear. So the difference between the stock turntable and the Houdini loaded turntable, well, it was akin to the blossoming of a flower. So before the piano tinkled merrily and plonked with a sense of satisfaction. But now there seemed more substance to that tinkling and plonking. There was more weight of information here. It sounded like the piano strings were getting together and or moving in the same direction. Earlier, the piano sounded a bit one-dimensional, shall I say? Now, the tonal realism was vastly improved. The same could be said of the upright bass, which now sounded fuller and richer. It had a newfound weight and it added a sort of definite addition to the soundstage. Earlier, it was sort of there somewhere, in the background. Now it had a definite place in the mix. It was there, it had a greater presence. The backing vocals offered more information within the actual harmony. So rather than being lumped into some sort of foggy mass, which sounded pleasant and nice, what we had now was more information within the actual harmony itself. You could hear more context in the harmony itself. You could hear more individual voices taking part. I then removed the Houdini and added the Acromat and tested that again in isolation. Now, yes, that did mean I had to change the VTA of the tone arm. As I've mentioned earlier on, that was pretty easy to do. And I would recommend looking at page 16 of the manual, which will act as a guide. The results here were pretty straightforward. That is the addition of the Acromat lowered the noise floor. The Fitzgerald vocal was clearer now, which added to the inherent smoothness of her delivery. Also, the music as a whole was more focused now, which enhanced the instrumental diction. What I mean by that is that the individual notes started and stopped with more purpose. Hence, the upright bass sounded definite in its approach. There seemed to be a greater sense of purpose from the bass response now, instead of the earlier slightly mushy sound, the bass notes offer the greater sense of accuracy, while piano, a resonant and relatively chaotic instrument, seemed to sort itself out and offer a performance of greater precision. The result, especially with that lower noise floor, 
was a sparkling performance. So what of the feet, the boing feet for and true? I then tried the feet, tested those again in isolation from everything else, just the 1500C and those boing feet. The result? Well, don't make the mistake that these feet are unnecessary or the make weights to bump up the actual kit itself. Oh no, I would say they are critical. On their own, the isolation features from the sprung feet again remove vibrational effects around the turntable as a whole. That includes the plinth, which means in sound terms an infusion in the soundstage with a gamut of air and space. The vocal now had freedom to fully explore the song in emotional terms because the goal now offered a greater nuance and refinement. Fitzgerald's signature smooth delivery really well delivered here. The smooth mid-range performance allowed her to maximise her vocal strengths. In addition, because the feet reduced the noise floor, you heard more, I don't know how to describe it, micro details, I suppose. So that meant you had more subtle detail, more subtle information, which meant that the overall music sparkled, which is all well and good, isn't it? But what happens when you put the whole thing together as a group? as the Kit 10. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, the basic stock 1500C is a good performer. The thing is though, when you compare the stock out of the box 1500C with the Kit 10 loaded 1500C, things change. You could almost accuse the Funk Femme upgrade of being passive aggressive. Why passive aggressive? Well, in comparison to the Kit 10 loaded 1500C, the stock model sounds nice, it sounds fine, it sounds reasonable, pleasant, as if the 1500C stock model is destined to die in an unmarked grave. That's because the performance of the Funk Firm Kit 10 raises the stock model of the 1500C to new heights. More than that, the Funk Firm Kit 10 hits the noise floor where it hurts, and sends it down to the canvas. The lower vibration and noise conveys a ton of new detail that just wasn't there before. The entire soundstage opens up, air and space infuses it and drags delicate details along with it. Space is made in between instruments, which means that you tend to hear more of the edges, which improves definition. It focuses more on the start and stopping of notes. It enhances the pace of the music. It gives the presentation a greater transparency to formerly shy details. All of that information is brought to the fore and listening fatigue is reduced. This makes you want to, well, just sit in your chair for far longer. You begin to wonder what's coming next. You begin to think to yourself, what can this turntable really do when it's off the leash? That's what this Funk Firm Kit 10 upgrade is all about. Before the upgrade, the SL1500C sounded almost desultory. After that, the same turntable sounded methodical. It finally had a purpose. So how do I conclude the review of the Funk Firm Kit 10 to upgrade the Technics SL 1500C.
to begin, I want to congratulate Technics on producing a good, basic, solid turntable design here. A design whose capabilities exceed its initial performance. And this is something I'd just like to remind you about. It's a slight tangent, but it does relate to this Technics design. Turntables are generally released onto the market with capacity to burn. The Funk Firm upgrade kit is not the first time I've heard this effect. Just because a manufacturer sends out a turntable design at price point X, accompanied by a list of accessories, it doesn't mean that the brand knows best. So one should not touch, shouldn't look to enhance or improve. Never forget that a manufacturer is restricted and is compromised whenever they build and release a product. Compromised by a build budget, compromised by a retail price. Now, if Technics could have really gone out of their way and really added everything they could to the 1500C design, they would have busted their budget, which is not part of the game. Money is the game. Money is the ultimate game. So on that score, never think that a manufacturer knows best. Never think they made it that way so they should know. So I shouldn't touch that platter mat. I shouldn't touch those feet. I shouldn't touch that head shell. Rubbish. A manufacturer is in business to make a profit and its products are set to a quality of finish that is all part of the balancing act to achieve that profit. Now you, as the end user, know and care not of the profit margin, and neither should you. If you care about maximising the sound from your turntable purchase, then it's your job to finish what the manufacturer has only just begun. And that's what many turntables are when you buy them. They are, in fact, a sort of work in progress. So you win if you throw in effect, money and ingenuity at the problem. Something the manufacturer is either unwilling or unable to do because of economics, because of resources, because of business. If you want to get the best from your hi-fi components, don't sit there and see yourself as a passive consumer. Don't sit there like a hi-fi version of Oliver Twist asking for more. See yourself as a proactive part of the design team once removed. On that basis, you can make a difference. So it's your job to tweak, your job to enhance and get the most of the products you buy. And what the Funk Firm is doing here is helping you in that task. The Funk Firm is empowering all 1500C users to do just that to enable you to, as it were, finish the job. Now, if everything I've just said was wrong, then adding this upgrade kit should not produce any enhancements. Adding this upgrade kit should not produce any improvements. However, it does produce enhancements. It does produce improvements. So I thank Technics again for infusing the 1500C design with hidden performance capacity. And we should be thanking the Funk Firm for providing the key to access that hidden capability. All 1500C users out there, potential or actual, should take a careful look at the Kit 10. It lifts that turntable up to another level. And that's it folks, thank you very much for sticking to the end of this video. As I say, if you want to know more, check out the description below. There are contact points for the Funk Firm. There's also a list of chapter headings if you want to move around or skip to different parts of this video. There are my social media links down there. There's also a link to my website, which has a host of editorial you won't see on this channel. I'm also on Patreon if you can support me there. Helps to keep this channel actually going in the first place. If you do become a member of my Patreon page, there are some exclusive features, written and videos, which you can access as well. But I'll be back next week and I'd love to have your company. So I hope you can join me then. Until that time, bye bye for now.